Okay, Mike Gould here, Mayor of Houndstown, USA, home to the happiest dogs on earth. I have Smuggler here who's participating in our 12-day boot camp, and we want to manage his energy, right, his brain. He's a little skittish, so there's been accidents, incidents where people reached at him or he saw something, he made an interpretation, and he nipped at them. So we have to respect his space, and we have to respect his energy. So the first thing we want to do is teach him certain things, take control and be in charge. So we do that by putting a leash on, a collision collar, and it stays on. If he jumps, I push him off. That's a boundary I don't want him to cross. So we always got to make sure we're teaching dog, balancing dog. So I take this temporary one off, and now I have control over the dog. And this leash and collar should stay on all the time when the dog is under your supervision. So if you look at my lobby, like your house, there's a lot happening here. But if strangers, so if I knock on the door, okay, boy, go boy. If I get low, he'll probably come to me. Good boy, good boy. So just by virtue of getting low, he came to me. So we don't talk a lot to dogs. We love dogs. I always protect my face, so I tell the little ones, never put your face near a dog's face. So I love him. Uh, I can teach him not to run and pull. Let's see. I'm giving him a treat. The fact that he's taking a treat means he's confident. He's okay with me. But if I throw the treat, I don't want him to chase it. Then I can throw another treat. He can't chase it. So this is how we start taking control over the dog's mind. Now, if somebody comes to the door, whoop, he's a little nervous and I'm a little old. We knock on the door. I don't have to worry about him biting somebody. Get back. Good boy. If I keep him away from the door. Does that make sense? And then people just come and go. So we lock our door just like you should if you have young children. Don't have people coming and going. He doesn't necessarily should be interacting with every human being. He doesn't want to. We're going to go inside and I'll show you how we deal with his energy. Okay. When the leash and collar are attached, it has to be relaxed. You can't put tension on the leash. So the first thing we teach the dog is not to pull on the leash, to follow us. We need to be the leader. We don't have to be the abusive yelling. We don't talk to dogs. When I move with my, I'm gonna take him outside. When I move with my left foot, he's gonna walk with me. Watch my energy. Watch the leash. When I stop, he's gonna stop. Sit. I pivot out my right foot, I'm gonna open the door. So, these are the things the pet owner has to learn. This, so I know how to drive this dog. You need to know how to drive it. Left foot, he comes with me. Let's go outside for a little video. Okay, come closer, camera. So everything is connected to his brain, right? So he is what we call a free-roaming dog, and human interpretation of his behavior might not be accurate. Uh, sit. He hears a bird, he sees kids over there. So he told me that. He turned around and is looking at it. That's fine, but I controlled him. I didn't let him run across the street. So when I take charge of him, his confidence, just like you do with young children, you're the leader of the children. If you're walking through Manhattan, they follow you. Uh, I'm going to walk this way, he's going to come with me. I don't have to talk. Why? And I'm loose. If I go fast, he goes fast. If I go slow, he goes slow. Watch my body. I turn, he turns. I stop, he sits. I pivot out my right, he stays. I come and I love him. Good boy. Good. But I don't reach down fast and put my face. He's, ner he's a little on the nervous side. I step out my left, we go. I understand his brain. I take care of the buses. I take care of those children over there are not necessarily children to him. They can be a threat. Sit. He's a good boy. He just needs boundaries. And the best we can teach, it's like learning how to ride a bicycle. I know how to ride the bicycle. If you take the time to learn, you'll ride the bicycle. But we have to address his brain, his basic needs. We're going to go inside, watch how he moves with my left foot, and watch my body. 
I'm not this. I'm not holding him back. Left foot. Good boy. And he likes it. If he had a tail, it would be wagging, I'm sure. And this is how we walk. Again, you want to walk faster? Good dog okay. game. Good boy. I don't recommend you do this, dropping the leash outside because he could run away. Okay, <laughs> fine. Then he comes to me. Let's go inside and do the crate. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so now we're inside. We were outside, did a little demonstration. It's all about energy. The dog is always on a leash and collar when he's under your supervision. The most important aspect of this whole program is going to be a crate. Dogs are denning animals. So the only way humans got bit by this dog is if they infringe on his personal space. If they put a finger down there, he shouldn't have been under a table to begin with. People shouldn't be reaching over your fence. So he doesn't get up, he's not psychotic and run. He had many opportunities to bite me. He's never even showed any signs of aggression while he's here. But we do understand that we don't impose ourselves on him. My face is here. Children you have to be particularly careful of because they're down low. You have to teach them, strangers, not to come running up to pet the dog. When there's ever a doubt, there's a simple solution to this, and it ends all our work. We teach the dog to go place. It's like this. I stand up, I'm relaxed. I'm going to say, smother, go place, place, go place. He goes in his crate. There's water, food. The only time, please listen, the only time the dog gets a morsel of food is when he goes into his crate voluntarily. All right, normally I'd have a treat. Um, I don't, and that's when he get the camera person has a treat. So he's drinking water and I'm gonna give him a treat. So if you think about it, every meal, every hot dog, every French fry, he can have them, but he has to go into his crate first voluntarily. When that crate door closes, it should be in a quiet part of the house, just like your bedroom is, and he should relax. There's nobody harassing him, and there's no way he can hurt a soul, unless they literally stick their fingers in there, which would be ridiculous. So you tell children when the dog's in his crate, it's quiet time, leave him alone. When you want the dog out, and see how relaxed he is, he's drinking water, he's not barking, he went in there voluntarily. This is a work in progress. This has only been a week or a little over a week. Uh, so it's a work in progress. When I want to release him, I open the crate, but he can't come out without permission. And we would do this with a five-year-old child, right? Okay, and he comes out. Good boy, good boy, smuggler, good boy. So the bottom line, smuggler's great. We just have this management system. He might not be the dog of your dreams that's going to run on the beach and, uh, I don't know, go to PetSmart with you. He's a great dog and he can be, there's no reason with the proper management, he'll live a long, healthy life. But the pet owner has to be thinking, just like you worry about your knives in the kitchen, you worry about the lawnmower in the garage. The dog has to understand, you have to be taught. Leash and collar always on. Go place, place, place. He goes in voluntarily, we shut the door. Only time we would mark that with a piece of food. And you do this randomly and intermittently. You just don't do it at bedtime or when you're leaving. We do this a hundred times a day, watch. Okay, good boy, good boy. Love, 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 then watch. Yeah, yeah, go place, place. Go place, good, place, place. Good, he didn't understand it because he just came out. We do this. And when you worried about the doorbell ringing, he goes to place, your problems are over. Thank you for your time, cooperation.